Hello! This is Lynn Hunter, spelled L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R. I always spell my first name at the beginning of uh, uh, one of these videos just because I do spell my name unusually. And if you're going to find me, you're going to find me with two L's and one N. Um, anyways, um, I'm a storyboard artist for animation and an illustrator and a lot of other things. But um, I have an Instagram account. And I just got my 600th follower, which may not seem a lot for other people, but it's a lot for me. I've been um, only been on Instagram for two years. And what I'm doing today is I am going to show you how to ink a dragon. Um, I've done this initial dragon in um, pencil. Just it's, You'll notice it's, it's a very, very loose rough. Um, I'm using a Speedball Crow Quill one or two nib. In a dip pen, I'm using, let's see if I put a screw on the cap here. This is D-letter. You can see it as my, my, my very uh, messy black D-letter um, number four ink. And I'm using number four ink because I'm going to do painting on this after I do the inking of it. So we're going to start with the inking. Um, this is going to be a, a basically a basic demonstration. Um, I'm going to Again, um, I did the initial drawing underneath is very loose, and I tend to tighten up my drawings as I go along. Now, I'm going to start with the eye, because I always feel that if you get the eye right, you know, everything else, you know, if you get the eye and the expression right in the beginning of your, paint, your drawings, everything seems to work out in the end. So, this dragon is a bit of, he's a mixture between... And I guess I've already decided it's he. Now, how do you know it's a he or a she? Um, since dragons are not mammals, I have never seen a dragon with testicles. So it's like, a, you know, mammals have testes. Um, lizards do not have external testes. They do have testes, but they're on the inside. So the thing is, is that you won't see a dragon with quijones, or balls, as the term would go. Anyways, um... So it's like, I'm just determining that this one's going to be a, a, a he. But um, the thing is, is that uh, this particular dragon, I've decided, is, is going to be basically a little bit of bird and lizard. Because I, I want to give him feathered wings. And I like to give my dragons ears. Now, because they're reptiles, you can have your ears internal or external. It's up to you. And I'm going to give them a little bit of stippling. Whenever you add a little bit of detail or dotting, I mean, that's all the, the stippling is, is little dots. But it gives a little bit of added detail. And whenever you add um, detail, it adds interest. So sometimes, you know, it you can do more detail, you can do less detail. It's all up to you. And since I already have laid down the basics, of the skeleton of the drawing. It's kind of like dot to dot behind um, what I'm doing. So it's like I've already set down a skeleton of a drawing so that it's much easier for me to see what I'm going to try to do in a detail on top of the drawing when I do it this way. Now you'll note with most um, pen it's easier to pull the line back than to push it forward because the, the um, pen is made of steel, so you want to draw back from your line rather than usually going forward. And so, I'm, you notice I'm, I'm starting at his head. Um, I could have started anywhere on this, this thing, but again, I like to start at the eye and work beyond. And with um, pen and ink, you're, you're obviously, it's linear. Um, because you're doing, you're working in nothing but lines, but you'll end up with lines, um, cross hatching and stippling. Those are, are some of the ways that you can add, um, interest and value to a drawing. Now I'm giving him some scales on his underbelly. And... I might give him a little bit of feathering on his neck, give him a little bit of roughness on his neck. Now what I'll probably to do too, just to let you know ahead of time, is I will um, 
often um, at the very end of a painting or at the very end of a drawing, especially a pen and ink drawing, I will I'll usually heavy up my outline afterwards. And he's got a chest. And while you're working on um, any type of animal or fantasy creature, a, a dragon's a composite. They're made up of basically, they're usually reptiles, serpents, um, bats. You'll use, you'll use bat wings a lot of times, or um, I'm using feathers, I'm using regular wings, I'm using bird wings on this particular dragon. And it helps if you have reference. If you've never um, drawn um, an animal that is composite animal, think about the animals that are making up your composite animal and go for reference that has um, pieces of that animal in it. Like if you need bird wings, go find some bird wings. Um, we're very fortunate nowadays that you know you can go online and you can look all this stuff up. Um, when I started drawing, I, I used to have, I had tons and tons and tons of reference books or I would tear up magazines and use photographs. And the thing is, is that I have been doing this for quite a few years. So my, I've, I've, I've drawn wings a number of times. I've drawn feathers a number of times. I've, I've drawn reptiles a lot of times. So there are certain things that I've already drawn many times so that I have them in my own memory library, which that's, I, got, I have a bit of advantage there, you know, so as an artist, um, once you draw something, a lot of times it'll be implanted in your memory. Um, it won't stay there completely. Um, doesn't mean that I don't use reference in front of me a lot, but when it comes to dragons, I've drawn a lot of dragons. I've done a lot of birds with bird wings. I still will pull out bird wings though, because the way the feathers lie, I always get mixed up when they're on top or when they're underneath or if I don't draw them a lot. And because I'm a storyboard artist, um, I've been, I'll, I'll work on a show like, um, um, I've worked on Curious George per se, and I'll be drawing Curious George all the time and I haven't worked on a dragon or haven't drawn a dragon in a while. And so the thing is, is that I will have, I can draw Curious George right out of the box, but you know, coming and do a dragon might be a little bit different, but certain things don't change. It's like right now I'm drawing his feet with claws. And the claws are a bit somewhere between um, like an eagle's feet. And eagles have these um, scales in the front of them. And then I'll give them another one over here. Because you're going to draw things in pairs. And maybe a little bit of feathering on the back. His elbow here, this is like an elbow. And you think about like there's a shoulder in here and this goes into his feet and these then goes down into a foot that's like again a bird's foot. And I'll draw another one over here as a pair. And I'll give him a little dew claw on the inside. And the claws up front. And mind you, I'm using a, a crow quill nib because they're great for small detail. Um, if you're doing larger pieces, there are different other kinds of um, pen nibs you might want to use. But I find that Crow Quill is great for going, getting my heavy and, and thin lines, and it gives me the control that I like. Um, you, there are a lot of nibs out there. I'll occasionally I'll use a, a Joseph Gillot, G I L L O T. Um, it's like my French sucks, and I know it's a French name. Um, but they're a much more flexible pen, whereas um, this is Crowquill, so it's it's a bit of a stiffer pen to use. Now I'm going to give him a bit of a, kind of a lion's foot in the back. So he, he's he's got a bit of a, a kind of a cross between a dragon and a griffin, maybe, because he he's this particular dragon is a little bit he's going to be a little bit. Uh, mammal slash um, bird reptile I mean it's like it's it's a dragon you can do whatever you dang well want with it is you know what what defines a dragon usually they're large reptilian um, some fly some don't some are um, they're serpentine um, some of them are worms 
basically just a straight old serpent and it really is whatever you want it to be because let's face it nobody's really ever seen a dragon and when it comes to cultures just about every culture for some reason has a dragon and some of them are friendly and some of them are evil um, they usually re represent power a lot of times they represent royalty um, um, there, there's all kinds of, of different ways that dragons are represented. I'm trying to decide what I want to do with the tail here. It's, if he was a flying dragon, so I'm going, okay, do I get, give him more feather? I think I'm going to feather this thing out a bit because I got it a bit thick in relative to the, the ways of the front. So I'll give him a kind of feather fur type of tail here. There we go. And now if I'm going to get, get this wing up here. Now the problem is, think you can see I've got a little bit of a puddle of ink that has formed right here that hasn't quite dried yet. So you got to be careful um, not to stick your hand in there. Um, sometimes actually, um, people use a piece of paper under their hand while they're they're working to keep from smearing stuff and keeping like the pencil this since it's graphite it's definitely gonna occasionally smear a bit but um, what I'm doing right now since I can't put my hand in this area and I really want to draw this wing I have two choices I can either turn the paper so that I can draw that wing or I can wait until that small patch of ink dries a little bit more and the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blot it there and that, that'll help that area dry faster. Because sometimes one of the problems with dip pens is that you can't always control the amount of ink that's going to be coming out of it. I think that the scariest thing is when you um, get a little bit too much in your dip pen and you'll drop a blob of ink right on your painting and I've done or your drawing and I've done it many, many times, believe me. And then what I usually do is I will go in with a, an X-Acto knife blade or a razor blade and scrape it away. I'm not the type to paint away my mistakes. I'll scrape them away because I usually work on very good paper. Um, the paper I'm currently working on is um, 300 gram or 150 pound uh, cold press watercolor paper. And it takes ink very, very well. Um, especially the D letter, um, any kind of India ink. Watercolor paper takes very, very nicely. With this type of ink pen, you'll feel a little bit of an extra drag. It'll feel a little bit heavier because you are dealing with paper that has a tooth. Um, so you'll find that it might be a little bit difficult to draw on when you're drawing on paper with a tooth. But um, it's really nice because then you can paint watercolor on top of it afterwards. And it's the ink makes a wonderful underdrawing because you've got varnish in your ink. The, the um, glue that um, holds the pigment in, in um, this type of ink, in India ink or in most modern inks, is either it's either an acrylic or it is a varnish and the varnish is uh, this particular um, um, ink the D letter number four is designed to um, have marker and or watercolor paint over the top of it so you it's waterproof so it will not dissolve when you put any water based or um, alcohol based. The, the, um, most of your markers, like Coptic markers, have an alcohol base to them, so they won't dissolve the ink. And this is a very nice solid black as an underdrawing for a transparent medium like marker or watercolor. So that's why the D, the D letter number four is really nice for that. Um, when you go up into some of the other, um, look, um, at the different inks, some of them like with D letter number six, 
it's a sumi ink it's water soluble so if you were if you paint on top of it it's a very black ink and it flows wonderfully but it's made for sumi type drawings and so you don't want to use like say a number six for um, a piece that you're going to do watercolor on top of so what I would do is when you're getting ready to get your ink like I said number four is perfect for um, painting watercolor on top of so just remember number four or when you're um, ordering it if you order it from Amazon um, they they give a very nice description so if you're worried about which one to order but um, just remember D letter number four it thus far um, I used to use um, black black magic Higgins um, some of the the um, um, inks um, that used to be traditional um, inks that I used to get I don't trust anymore because I would um, dilute them only slightly with water and then they'd become water soluble I find that the D letter even if I dilute it a little bit um, it stays very black um, and I will dilute it sometimes just so it won't dry as fast um, the ink dries very very quickly and you can dilute it just slightly with, with water and that'll make it flow just a little bit better and um, I found that with um, a lot of the other inks that I was uh, using that I couldn't dilute them and they would become water soluble when they they shouldn't be water soluble and they said they were waterproof and it was like okay you're lying to me okay now I've, I've put down most we've got the the basic drawing down of the dragon now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do a little bit of um, parallel lines to get my um, to do a little bit of um, um, value in them so it's it's like I'm, gonna, I'm getting a little bit of volume by it's like I put some shadow here behind the one leg in the back and I'm gonna add another leg over here or the illusion to another leg and because it's gonna be in shadow too I'm just gonna do parallel lines to just take that side of it back in shadow now we're gonna put them on top of a, a little hill here so I'm going to do some indication here of a little hill And parallel lines are the best the best way to go and the thing is is that you can also like for for grass I mean literally you know you create little leaves and what's a leaf just one line and a line 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 and you just link them together and you've got a plant just to add some interest on the little hillock he's sitting on or you know give a stalk with some seeds on it just so so you give some a little bit of interest to the this little hillock he's he's sitting on top of and then to give stones again they're they're just different shapes of lines going in the same direction and then I'm going to give little almost bumpy lines to give a feeling of plants and leaves that he's sitting on top of okay now I want to to take his the this is the underwing here so I want to take that back a little bit so I'm going to put a little bit of cross hatching so I'm going to do a little some more parallel lines And when you first start doing this it feels like a mess because oh you just put so much work into getting that the, the the top part all right and all the nice little details in there and now you're 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 hiding them all behind these you know multiple lines but the thing is is that it's like looking through a screen you can still see the detail behind your eyes picking up that detail but this is just to give it so you can feel that this area is in shadow and there's all kinds of different ways to do cross hatching and there's all kinds of different ways 
to give shadow. It's like right now I'm doing just little kind of stipply lines. Because I'm not sh quite sure how I want this to... There we go. So, there we go. And like with these, I'm giving more lines that are going around his body. And I think I want to give him a few extra scales. He's kind of... Um, I'm not sure whether I want him to be furry or not, so I'm, I'm going to give him, like, fish scales. And these are just little C's, or U's, that are linked one, one to another. Maybe give him some little bumps. And that, again, it's just like they're like little circles that aren't quite finished. And give him some more scaling down here just for some texture okay and do something with that tail make these more more like feathers like, are they fur or are they feathers? I haven't decided. Somewhere in between. Okay, and I'm going to give them some clouds in the background. And clouds you can, are really fun to try to play with. Um, I think of them, you know, it's, it's like, I like the cottony cumulus type. And clouds are one of those things, I swear, I, one of these days all I want to do is paintings of clouds. Because there's so many different ways that clouds are formed and shaped. And it's, it's like, how do you draw them? How do you paint them? And there are a million different ways you can do clouds. And there are a million ways you can draw them. And the best thing, um, a lot of the times I like to, I collect um, books from the turn of the century, primarily because when, um, around the turn of the century, um, the only ways you could print things was usually in black and white. So the, that a lot of the printing techniques applied themselves to using pen for like engravings and what have you. So you'll find a lot of the pen techniques and a lot of drawing techniques at the turn of the century, there are a wide variety of ways that people used to draw with pen and ink. We, um, since we've got felt tips now, I mean the, the um, Fine felt tips that we have now are great replacements for pen and ink, and let's face it, we're all on computer now. But um, getting into the scritchy, scrawly, fun um, detail of pen and ink is just, it's fun. I think, you know, be, beyond the fact that we've been using um, India ink and pen for Oh, probably, let's see here, over a thousand years, um, you know, and since paper was invented, um, we've been using literally quill pens, and so there's so many different ways you can use pen and ink, and it's just because it's such an ancient um, medium, it's just fun to use. And once, once you get play with it a little bit, you'll find that, that it's, it's frustrating at first. And as usual, I mean, my, my suggestion is always work small, do a lot of small drawings, and then you, you get done fast. The work is, is um, as interesting as if you were doing a large piece. And you can make mistakes and go on to the next one. Okay, we're just about done here. 
And the other nice, the really nice thing about pen and ink is that it has this really, really, you can tell this really nice thick black line. And when you're done, you've got this beautiful, beautiful um, thick black line. And it just makes a really nice underdrawing for watercolor. And also, if you're doing a dragon like this, let's face it, he's got, you know, you, you have got my Renaissance music on in the background, and and um, it just, a dragon done in pen and ink is just, I'm sorry, it's classic. Okay. All right. That's about it for that one. What I'm going to do, we're going to let it sit for just a second here. The nice thing also about pen and ink, it dries friggin' fast. Okay. Cover up my ink bottle here. Now what I like to do, this is a kneading, kneaded eraser. Um, I will talk about this often. They come in, let me get my, I think I've got a pack of them. new one over here. Yeah. They will come in up. Um, um, this is a, what it looks like when you get it. It's square. Um, they come in smaller packs than this, but it's just, it's, it's literally whipped up rubber. It's called kneaded rubber. And it's like Silly Putty. If you've ever played with Silly Putty as a kid, um, but it, this is how you clean it is by, you know, just kneading it. Um, but what I like about kneaded erasers is that when you get done with the drawing, you can easily, you nicely erase away the line. Um, it doesn't disturb the paper very much and it picks up all, or it picks up a good amount of the, uh, the graphite first. So that you aren't disturbing, you know, the drawing too much. Now that's not it. Now you really have to work at it to get it all the graphite away. So I'll, I'll do. I'll go over my drawing with a kneaded eraser first, and then I'll go back in with a latex eraser. This is your basic white latex eraser, and I'll get the rest of the underdrawing with the latex eraser. And that way, um, it's pretty gentle on the drawing, and you won't pick up any of the um, the uh, ink underneath. Also, um, you can use a if you've got a, a a drafting brush to sweep away your your eraser droppings. But that's that's the basic drawing right there. And what I'm going to do now is when we get done, I'm done with this one for the, the drawing portion of it. And I'm going to do another video with just the painting. Okay. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your coming and taking a look. And remember, my name is Lynn Hunter, L-L-Y-N-H-U-N-T-E-R. Um, please subscribe to my channel. I'm doing a video a week. And if you care to come and join my Patreon club, I have a Patreon at um, patreon.com, um, Lynn Hunter. It's in the, um, in the information below. And again, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. Bye-bye.